Fairy Season has three to five players using goblins and traps to capture the largest and most valuable swarm of fairies. Brendan Noonan of Quicksilver Studio, on behalf of Good Games Publishing, provided this in exchange for an honest review. There are four types of cards. The four season fairy suits, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, are numbered one through eight. Each season has an ability that allows you to draw and or stash cards when played. I'll explain royal fairies, goblins, and traps soon. On your turn, play a card onto the central play area, the swarm. The starting card can be any season, but because this is a trick-taking ladder game, you need to be clever and watch out for clever opponents. To follow with a season fairy, play an equal or a higher card from the same season, or any card from the following season. Let's say you started with Spring 5. After resolving its ability, the next player follows with a Spring 5 of their own to trigger a matching bonus. In addition to the card's ability, the matching bonus allows them to draw a card or stash a card face up in their personal pile. At the end of the game, stash cards score points. One per Season Fairy, two per Royal Fairy. The third player now plays Summer 7. If you have no valid plays, you flunk. If another player doesn't play a Royal Fairy to continue the round, the last player who legally played a card wins the entire swarm for their stash. Another way to win the swarm is to play a trap. Unless another trap or royal fairy is played, collect all of those tricksy fairies for yourself. Traps and the other special cards are played sideways on the swarm. The royal fairies can break traps, allowing the round to continue. You may have flunked, but the trap is broken before play returns to you. You might be able to rejoin the round depending on the swarm cards. Goblins have special abilities to change things up. Party Goblin lets you draw two cards and everyone else draws one. Stash the three cards under Greedy Goblin. If played on a Goblin, Doppel replays its ability. Season Fairies can be played on Season Fairies, Goblins, and Royal Fairies as long as you follow the latter rules. Goblins can be played on Season Fairies and Goblins. Drafts can be played on any card except for Royal Fairies. Royal Fairies can be played on top of any card. The most points wins the game once the deck runs out, but if you can get all four royal fairies in your swarm at once, you immediately win. Play cards, trap fairies, and try to manipulate things in order to score the most points. That's Fairy Season. Fairy Season's 20 minute box time is actually accurate. Extra players won't stretch out the game time. Despite the extra people taking turns, the deck empties quicker. I also think things will be a bit nastier and more chaotic. I can't confirm this because of the pandemic, and you can only play at 3, but I'm pretty confident. Player areas in the central area are small. You could play with the full player count on a coffee table. If an adult or older player is there to help with reading and explaining the trickier goblins, I think experienced 6 year old gamers could give this a shot. By 8, many kids will be able to play on their own. Late in our first game of fairy season, I played a royal fairy to escape a trap. Little did I know, Dad had another trap up his sleeve. He won that trick. To make things worse, he then revealed that he had all four royal fairies. We played again, and luck was on my side. All of the goblins seemed to work out for me, and I had royal fairies when the traps came out. I crushed my parents. I love fairy season's graphic design, and the cards are easy to read. The corner symbols help with color blindness and also make them feel like standard playing cards. The art is pretty without being distracting. This definitely doesn't drag, but it's also not so quick that you're like, oh, was that it? It flows well, even with the ability to break traps. The levels of mitigation are genius. Don't have the right card to continue the ladder? Play a goblin either as a placeholder or to manipulate things. Maybe you were able to play a card from someone's stash to keep the game going, or remove some cards to change up the ladder. The Royal Fairies Breaking Traps is clever because you might not want a round to continue, so why throw away such a valuable card? Many card games are all about hand management and timing, but this adds a few more things to think about. Do you toss out a trap early? Do you start with a fairy from later in the year? Do you just try and draw as many cards as possible, hoping to make a late push? The rulebook is very good with tons of examples, but we have to go to Board Game Geek to clarify Cheeky Goblin. 
Yes, it copies the effect in not just the season and value. The box is small, but not small enough to go into a pocket or purse. On the flip side, once you know the rules, you can just take the deck with you. Also, because it takes up so little table space, you could play this at a restaurant, on a train table, and so on. When I was contacted to see if I'd be interested in reviewing this, I was winding down an extremely busy 2020, so I wanted to focus on games off of our shelf. Despite that, I thought that the theme, length, and mechanisms would be a good fit for my channel and audience. I didn't have high expectations, especially since the description made me think of Ladder 29, a game I disliked more with each play. This is so much better. The player choices and timing, the mitigation, and speed of each game, this can be played in half the time, make this not only a game I enjoyed, but a game I recommend. I look forward to playing this with more people whenever we can have people over again.